As much as things change, they stay the same in relationship to the police abuse and murder of black people. You know, that's what it shows you that. And not just black people, poor people in, uh, people in general. You know, because never in the history of this country has the police ever been convicted or tried of a crime of, for uh, and did serious time for killing a black person, a brown person, a white person, a yellow person, anybody. You know, this never has happened, you know, in the history of this country. It's to create and instill fear. Don't you dare go up against us. If you do, we'll beat the sh stuff out of you. But instead of fear, people should be angry. If we can get that spirit back, that spirit of collectivity, that spirit of organizing and working together against a common enemy and understanding that we do have a common enemy and it sits right up there on Capitol Hill, the capitalist system, not the individuals. You and Bobby had asked me, to do this drawing of AP, which I did on four hoofs initially, and then I wanted to put the badge number of the pig who was intimidating, harassing, and abusing his rights as a police officer in the community uh, each week. So that's how that initially came about. And then I, from my evaluation of the pig drawing I did do, I said, why don't I stand up on two hoofs and keep the snort, the tail, and all that, put a badge on it, and then it took on a life of its own. In this culture, a uh, pig it was, a, it was a low natured kind of animal that wallowed in the filth and the slime and, you know what I mean, totally just de uh, degrading kind of uh, uh, animal. Huey and them initiated themselves uh, thought it was a legitimate stance because, and I agree with like many others who became a part of the Black Panther Party because of the of the police abuse. You, you used to see it on the electronic media. Uh, the riots and rebellions that took all across the country because of police abuse. Standing up to that was a legitimate act that took place all over the, all over the country. It definitely um, made an impact in relationship to that people weren't going to just stand around anymore and that there were going to be some, some form of uh, in education, enlightenment about these issues, and that the community were showing that the community was outraged around these issues. You have to understand that the climate and the times. You, you're talking about the same t policemen who were uh, uh, abusing and brutalizing the, and murdering civil rights marchers in the South, were the same ones being recruited in the same attitude as those being recruited into police departments in the North, right here in the Bay Area. You know, you had the Klan marches in the, in, in the East Bay in the, in the 30s and the, in the 40s, you know. It's been documented. You know, in Oakland, there were Klan in the, uh, in the surrounding areas. And they burned the crosses, all those things. So, you know, so you, you the whole, what, that's what you're dealing with. That, you're dealing with that climate. From what I learned about it, it was, it was the police who initiated, who um, instigated the uh, erratic and um, spontaneous uh, uh, trashing of the, of the of, of stores and 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 uh, some of the violence that went down. You know, people were enraged and spontaneously enraged by the actions of the police because it had it had been a peace, peaceful march and people, from what I learned, people were grabbed. And, and you know, the, one was caught on camera. I saw it myself. It was in brutalized, and you know, they just, you know, how they run them up, and they, um, they, and doing what they do a lot. So, hundreds of people were arrested that night uh, and charged with all kinds of uh, uh, charges that were <coughs> later dropped. Some were felonies, but were later dropped. Uh, um, J.R., uh, who writes for the uh, uh, Bayview and uh, San Francisco Bayview and, and is a leader uh, in the POCC, the Prisoners of Conscience Committee, uh, had his camera out there and was uh, targeted because he's been uh, in the forefront of exposing police brutality. So he was um, jacked up and imprisoned and is facing fel still facing felony charges. And I, as far as I know, he, to date, he hasn't gotten his camera back. So um, 
they want to quash those pictures, no doubt. And uh, they want to quash JR, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I think we need to be careful about uh, using riot uh, when it's really rebellion uh, and legitimate rebellion because um, it's one thing to just, I mean, a riot is, is, is to me, is, is these football game kinds of riots that are just silly, you know, over silliness and people just going nuts and drinking too much and acting a fool. These are rebellions, you know. And uh, everybody was extremely incensed at somebody being blatantly shot in the back and, and Messerly being able to turn up in Nevada, just quit his job and go to Nevada. I mean, that would never happen. To, it, that never would have happened it had it been a reverse situation. What do you think about the venue being changed to Los Angeles for his trial? Well, actually, I think it's a kind of a good move. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, <laughs> because uh, L.A. is more powerful than uh, and has a larger black and brown community and uh, uh, ooh, yeah, <laughs> and people have been through uh, uh, rogue cops. They've had plenty of trials of rogue cops in uh, in L.A. and the experience with rogue cops and acting a fool, running amok. So yeah, no, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to be sorry they, they made the move. I think the, uh, the uh, defense attorneys for Mesley are going to be regret having asked uh, for a change of venue. <laughs> I think they were probably already regretting it. <laughs> mm -hmm.